Hi, and welcome back to NetAssassin videos on uh, all things security and networking. So do us a favor, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, this video is actually going to go over how to set up phase one and phase two on a PFSense firewall uh, in order to create an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN with Google Compute. Uh, there will be a second video that will show you how to set the settings in Google Compute. Uh, this one should probably be watched after the uh, one where you're setting up Google. So uh, basically all you're going to do is go in and we're going to go to VPN and create a new IPsec VPN and we're going to start by creating phase one. The documentation from Google is a little bit sparse so uh, what you're going to see is the result of a lot of trial and error uh, and uh, I'm able to create very stable and long-lasting tunnels now uh, into my Google Compute instances. So for general information, all we're going to do is we're going to leave the key exchange on auto. Uh, you can set it to version 2, uh, which is preferable. Uh, when we do set up the, um, the Google side of things, you'll see we can set it to IKE1 IKE and IKE2. Uh, generally, just leave it on 2, and you can leave this one here set to audio, on auto. Uh, our internet protocol is going to be IPv4. Our interface is going to be WAN. Of course, change this if you happen to be using a different external interface uh, for your uh, IPsec uh, endpoints. If you don't know what I just said, then just leave it set to WAN. The remote gateway is going to be the static IP that was that you generated when you created the uh, IPsec VPN uh, quote-unquote appliance or the virtual appliance inside of Google Compute. For right now, I just have 123, 123, 123, but change that appropriately. Enter a description so you understand what this particular VPN tunnel is used for. And then we have our phase one proposal. Uh, this is where the trial and error came in. So we're going to be using a mutual PSK. Uh, our negotiation is going to be main. The identifiers are going to be the IP addresses of both ends. And then the pre-shared key, whatever you enter here, is going to have to be identical in case and so forth to what you enter. This is just the, same, the password, in other words, for both sides to use. It's a key. Our phase one proposal will be triple DES. Uh, our hash algorithm will be MD5. The DH group that Google uses is DH group 14, in other words, 2048 bit. And your lifetime will be 36,000 seconds. And this is the hard part because it's really not documented in anywhere that I could find it. And if you have any of these set incorrectly, it just simply won't do the phase one negotiation properly. Under advanced options, just leave NAT traversal set to auto. Uh, delay uh, and uh, max failures. I like to s enable uh, dead peer detection. Kind of helps with your tunnels. Uh, I set those also to 10 and 5, which I think is a little bit different than the default. And that pretty much does it for phase 1. Alright, now on to phase 2. In phase 2, we're going to be defining the remote and local networks. One of the key pieces to building a phase 2 uh, successfully for any IPsec VPN that you're setting up is that they must be correct on both ends. So in my particular case, I'm setting a 22-bit CIDR for this, starting at this IP address. Uh, this actually covers several of my local VLANs, which is fine. But the only rule that we have to keep in mind is whatever I create here as my local network must be identical to how I've named it as the quote unquote remote network on the other end of the tunnel. And actually, this rule applies in reverse. Here I said the remote network for my Google network is 10.240.0.0 and it's a 16-bit subnet. In my Google video, you'll also see that I actually suggest not doing this. This is the default 16-bit subnet for one of their uh, regions. I do believe this is the default for their central region. You should change this and create a new network. I think in my Google video, you'll hear me call it my Skunkworks network, and I set it as a more normal 24-bit 24-bit uh, CIDR. Uh, this is important because if you build another um, project inside of Google and put it back in the central region, it will once again default itself to the same 16-bit. If you try to create two IPsec tunnels at that time, you're going to have to use NAT traversal uh, for one of them since they would both be the same. But if you go about creating new CIDRs inside of each one and then deleting this 16-bit, your life will be easier because then each one will be its own uh, accessible uh, network without having to put do NAT in between them and that just makes it a little bit easier 
uh, especially for engineers and other developers to understand what's going on. But again, the main rule of thumb is both this has to match what the other end says is the remote network, and this has to match what the other end says is the local network, and as you can see, they are named local network here, remote network there. Description, whatever you would like to call it here, just to tell you what this phase two is for. Now, of course, you can build multiple phase twos. Um, that might be needed if you have different subnets on both ends and you want to make sure more and more traffic comes through. Our phase two protocol is going to be ESP. Our encryption algorithm will be AES. Just go ahead and leave it to auto. Our hash algorithm is SHA-1. Our PFS key group will be set to off. Our lifetime is 10,800 seconds. Just like in phase one, this is extremely important. And if I remember correctly, it took me a little bit of time to figure out and find some documentation where that was listed. The automatic, uh, automatically ping host option is kind of useful. If you have a uh, machine set on the other end, uh, you can go ahead and add that IP here. And what that will do is that will actually cause the tunnel to uh, open up, the phase two portion of the tunnel to open up as soon as phase one connects. In other words, as soon as your firewall comes online and IPsec is enabled. Um, if you don't do this, the tunnel will actually stay collapsed until such time as there's network traffic that goes into the router that is destined for the remote network. At that time, it will then create phase one, build phase two, uh, and then allow the traffic. So in other words, there'll probably be a second or two or three second delay uh, in the first set of packets that try to go through, then it will remain up until that dead peer that we set in phase one has been reached and then it will collapse that tunnel. In this particular case, uh, I left it empty, but in, in a lot of my uh, tunnels, especially when I know it's gonna be used uh, for traffic and um, my users and so forth are gonna get upset because there's this initial delay when they try and connect to something if somebody else hasn't used that tunnel yet uh, within the last hour or so. Uh, I'll just go ahead and add the IP address of something to ping on the other side. So that does it for phase one and phase two. Uh, if you haven't already, go watch the uh, corresponding video that goes over what you should be setting on the Google side of things.